I woke in a haze. Dozens of my shipmates sat beside me, tied up. A number hulk tossed another of my crewmates to the ground and headed back into the darkness. You awake, Carlos? I asked to my friend on the right. No answer. From the shadows was a familiar gait of a Neogi. A half full spider, half eel, all asshole. It stuck its face right up to mine. Quiet, slave. Then, the Umber Hulk seized me and dragged me away. Watching the hallway glide past me, I noticed three Niyogi holding down an elder one. The older Niyogi was fighting as they opened its mouth and tossed in a green, brackish liquid. Before I could question what was going on, I was rudely tossed down a ravine. The world spun as rocks cracked my rib. I landed with a thud. It took a few seconds for me to get to my feet due to my hands being tied. Crunching noise reverberated the cave. A 20-foot monstrosity, a bloated mass of Niyogi bodies, mucus dripping to the floor. I found a femur of a huge beast and held it in my bound hands. So it's gonna be this way. Come here, you son of a bitch. The Niyogi are one of the most iconic spelljamming race in all of Wild Space. While they are your stereotypical slavers, there's a bit more beyond just that. The Niyogi appear across of between a wolf spider and a moray eel. The short, furry, eight-limbed body is topped by a lithe, bare, fleshy neck with a serpentine head, its mouth filled with needle-sharp teeth. The ends of its limbs are tipped with claws. The ends of its limbs are tipped with small claws. The fur of the Niyogi is a light tan, but dyed a variety of colors to signify power, rank, accomplishments, and warnings to other Niyogi. The older a Niyogi is, the more colorful its hide becomes. A Niyogi with a bare pelt has no status. The Niyogi have hairy, ugly bodies that they dye colorfully. These cause them to look like exploded rainbows, but the colors signify rank, achievement, and power within the Niyogi organization. The most colorful Niyogis are usually, but not always, captains and the overmaster of the Niyogi ships. The Niyogi also tattoo their slaves with symbols of ownership, usually on the left shoulder, in the front and back. These tattoos identify the individual as property. And should a slave survive to have more than one master, an additional tattoo will be placed below the first one. Any tattooed creature is considered property of the Niyogi. If found wandering alone, it will be claimed and its immediate return to the owner demanded. The Niyogi are a slaving race with an inborn sense of property. The most important slave to Niyogis are their Umber Hulks, which you will never find in Niyogi without a couple of these as their protectors. The Umber Hulks are trained from birth to follow their Niyogi around. They are their bodyguards, and each Niyogi at least has one personal Lord Servant, which is one of these Umber Hulks. If an Umber Hulk should die, the Niyogi is considered an outcast. The Niyogi outlook is owned or be owned. They also never congregate all in one place because that would require an overmaster to own another overmaster, and that requires heavy negotiations. The Niyogi ship of choice is the Death Spider. It's a huge hulking craft powered by a major helm. In space, Death Spiders will attack smaller ships using their grappling rams, and then an Umber Hulk servant will scramble across, ripping holes in the opponent's ship and carrying off slaves and bodies of any they slay. They also have the Mind Spider. If one should come across a Niyogi, it would probably be in a Death Spider. The Death Spider is divided into a command section and cargo pits. The command section is in the forward portion of the vessel and contains the bridge, helm, and quarters and possessions of the most important Niyogi aboard. The large abdomen of the craft is used as a weapons platform cargo space, and slave quarters, including quarters for the lesser Niyogi. The top half of the abdomen can slide back and reveal a small citadel perched in its lower haunches. This structure is normally revealed only in battle situations, since the Death Spider's weapons are located there. The forward weapons pit of the citadel deck is also the source of boarding parties when the grappling ram captures an enemy ship. A Death Spider can carry eight Niyogi, each of whom has a personal Umber Hulk bodyguard. The bite of a Niyogi is a slowing poison. Those bitten or fail saving throw will be affected by a slow spell. This lasts one to eight round, and multiple bites will extend this period by additional 1.8 round. One in 10 Niyogi can cast level one through eight spells. This ability is used by the Niyogi to gain an advantage in combat against opponents. The life cycle of a Niyogi is pretty crazy, and I'm going to read it pretty much verbatim from the Adventures in Space box set. As a Niyogi grows older and his mind fades, 
his orders become confused and his slaves become disobedient. His fellow Niyogi may then choose for him to become a great old master. The small lords then poison the older one at once. The different poisons moving through its body overload the old Niyogi system and begins to change into the great old master. The Niyogi making the transformation swells to 20 foot height in similar girth. Its legs and arms become useless and the last of its intelligent fades. It lives now only to eat. During this time, the Niyogi begin to hunt exclusively for the new great old master, can be captured and fed to the master. Live flesh is preferred, but dead will sustain it. The great old master will inflict 1d12 hit points of damage per round to any creature fed to it. After two months of such activity, the skin of the great old master bursts and a new crop of mature Niyogi spill forth. These are unmarked and barely sentient upon their birth. And for the next week, the brood area resounds with combat as young Niyogi kill each other for food. Of the 20 to 40 Niyogi that eat their way out of the old master, only about three to six survive. These are considered slaves of the entire ship to be killed or risked in combat until such a time as they claim and command an Umber Hulk as their personal slave. At this point, they are officially part of the Niyogi community. If the Great Old Master is attacked and its flesh pierced, it will release two to eight Niyogi to defend itself. These are taken from the future brood and if slain will not be replaced. The blunt weapons will not be able to pierce the skin, will not bring the young forth. Edged and piercing weapons or magical spells that pierce or burn will produce this defensive reaction. The remains of the Great Old Master are consumed by the surviving young most Niyogi consider this fate to be an equivalent of a human dying of old age. Kajikski is a Niyogi major deity, who according to Niyogi belief created the universe, the gods, and eventually gave rise to the Niyogi race. According to the creation myth, the universe was created by a being called Kajaxi. This deity constructed the planes, spheres, flow, and planets. Finally, it created five more deities, each like itself, only weaker. The five named Krinchki, Pik, Tienskil, Kritex, and Kilex each represent one of the desirable aspects of the Niyogi race. These deities squabbled over their areas of control until Kajitski grew tired of their bickering and, and punished them. Furious, the five hatched a plot to kill him, concocting a fatal brew with the foulest ingredients including friendship, mercy, and compassion. They poisoned their creator. Kajitski began to swell up and the young deities hid fearful of his wrath. Suddenly he burst, spilling its entrails across the spheres. Some landed in the outer planes, and parts containing mercy and compassion became gods of good. Some landed in the lower planes and became the evil god. His brain landed in a forgotten crystal sphere. After some much searching, the Niyogi deities found the brain and were amazed to discover that the brain had given rise to the first Niyogi. The deities taught these Niyogis of the multiverse, and their destiny was to conquer it all. The Niyogi built the Spelljammers and left their homeworld, and they never returned. The Niyogi worship the god Thrigki from the plain Karish in the Abyss. Although the deity of love, Thrig, Thrig is better translated as jealousy or hatred. To Niyogi, jealousy and love are the same. Thrigki appears as a Niyogi with writhing snakes of her hair and twelve spidery legs. Puk from the plain Kipik in Bator. Her folio is fear and tyranny. Pict is the favorite deity of captains and Niyogi in positions of power. Pic is seen as an Umber Hulk with the head of a Niyogi. Tens kill, neutral evil from Karish. Its portfolio is torture, pain, and suffering. The name Tzenskil is invoked by Niyogi torturers and those in charge of the slave pens. Worshippers are tattooed with grotesque black symbols of pain. Tzenskil looks like a Niyogi with a whip and a tongue. Jikyu in the gray waste. The portfolio is war, brutality, and strength. Kritztex is the Niyogi deity favored by the Umberhulk slaves, who delight in the brutality of wanton destruction. In favor of Kritix is always demanded before a major battle. He is seen as a red Niyogi with continually burning claws and hair. Kilix from Karish. His portfolio is death, murder, and poison. Kilix is a patron of murderers and assassins in the Niyogi world and is seen as the darkest of shadows. Horrid laugh is high-pitched and whining, yet also deep and booming. It's said to be heard by those who are about to die. 
there is an offshoot of Niyogi called the Reavers. They are rogue Niyogi. They are seeking to escape other Niyogis and their poisons that will transform into one of these great old masters. They are a little better than their fellow Niyogis. Maybe this is a way you can create a little bit more nuance for the Niyogi. Nothing brings a party together like getting rid of slavers and setting free the downtrodden. The trick is to give the Niyogi depth while also making them the real a-holes of wild space. If you can do that, then these multicolored spider eel slavers could be your next BBEG. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like and subscribe, and thank you.